I'm sick of talking about this goddamn movie. I'm spending more time on this review than the filmmakers did on the script. Let me just get this over with. Don't focus on the framework. The Terminator movies, or at least the good ones, aren't about time travel. The first and second movie have time travel in them, and it shows some Judgment Day, a little bit, but that's just framework to hang this real story on about destiny and action and adventure and love and death. That's all this serves as. The only reason they show the future is to set the stakes so that we know just how important John Connor is. We don't need a whole movie about the time travel. This is why, once again, I would have preferred a remake. The meat of the story is a chase. The T-100 chasing Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor. The T-1000 chasing John Connor, Sarah Connor, and the T-100. And to say you can't make a good remake out of that is ridiculous. You can do whatever you want. The movie just has to be about a bunch of humans run away from a Terminator. I could make a good movie out of that. Why didn't they do that? I'm not saying that I want a Terminator remake because no one really wants it or needs it. But if you're gonna do it, why do this? This movie pretty much focuses on the framework. The only real chase is at the beginning and there's no stakes at all because we know what happens. Throughout this entire chase, I didn't feel any suspense or tension. It's just boring. When you start to look at all this ridiculous time travel shit, you start to realize that it doesn't make any sense. Time travel doesn't make any sense. Time travel's just there to hang a story on. There's one movie I can think of about time travel that actually somewhat makes sense, and that is Primer. That's because Primer was written by an astrophysicist or some shit. Whoever, whoever studies that kind of stuff, I'm not a scientist. And the movie goes in depth with complex time travel explanations and how they built the time machine and how this works and how that works. It gets so into detail that I had to watch it three times to even understand what the fuck it was about. So A, so the original Adam, Adam 1, became Adam 2 when he used failsafe 1 and set up another failsafe for Abe 1 to use to become Abe 2. But then Adam 2 be, Adam 2 uses failsafe Adam 2 uses failsafe 3 to become Adam 3. And after Adam 2 drugs Adam 1, Adam 3 attacks Adam 2, but Adam 2 overpowers him because Adam 3 is tired from time travel. He's we weakened by it. Adam 2 used failsafe 3 to become Adam 3. Okay? Now, this has to sound like nonsense. This has to. In a movie like Back to the Future or Looper, the time travel logic doesn't really make much sense. But does it matter? No. Because there are characters that we care about, a story that's entertaining, engaging, and interesting, and fun! Where's the fun in this? At the end of the war, Skynet was trying to develop a new type of infiltration unit by infecting human subjects with machine-faced matter. It restructures and rebuilds human tissue on a cellular level for maximum combat utility. to understand parallel universes, alternate realities, etc. which I understand, since Star Trek has dealt with this topic several times. So, the idea that Kyle leaves one universe, reality and ends up in another isn't too hard to grasp. He left the prime universe as it were, where all the events took place as they originally did, since this movie ignores T3, Salvation and the TV series. We can ignore those as far as timelines go. So, J-Day happened in 1997 after the events of T2. So, that is the universe from which Kyle left. However, he ended up in an alternate timeline due to the attack on John by Skynet, which the Guardian subsequently explains how Kyle could be remembering two different timelines, the one he's from and now the one he's in where J-Day didn't happen in 1997, but at a later date, since John was sent back to 2014 to see that Cyberdyne would survive and Geniuses would go online and become Skynet. So, Kyle was also remembering his future and this new timeline, from when he told himself what Johnny C's was. Timeline of Kyle Reese goes back in time to 1984 and saves Sarah Connor and the events of the original Terminator creating timeline B. Kyle Reese dies trying to destroy the Terminator then Sarah Connor destroys him then that leads into Terminator to Judgment Day. The T-800 goes back to protect John Connor from the T-1000 and in the end the T-1000 gets destroyed and the T-800 destroys himself to keep the learning chip out of Skynet's hands. That leads into Terminator 3 and the TX goes 
goes back and tries to kill Connor then the T-800 is sent to save him and that leads into the events of Terminator Salvation and they destroy Skynet HQ in the end that leads up to Terminator Genesis this movie begins after the events of Salvation a few years after. They take a Skynet base and use the time device to send Kyle Reese back to 1984 but that timeline is already changed and this is timeline C and make no mistake when they go back in time they just create other timelines not erase the previous timelines timeline A and B still and always will exist. Skynet purposefully fucked up the timeline so the resistance can never win, all it can do is retreat to previous times and the timeline, thus creating new timelines, thus needing to go back in time, thus altering a stable timeline, thus modifying a necessary timeline thus demanding the repetition of the necessary timeline that they were attempting to modify in the first place, thus repeating everything again ad infinitum. Skynet is competent in being purposefully incompetent because it makes the resistance mistakenly believe they can change anything about history while, in fact, all they are doing is playing an unwinnable game in which Skynet constantly wins because all the actions in any timeline necessarily obligate further actions and modifications within a given timeline, creating an infinite loop in which two possible choices can be made by the Connors and Arnolds either the resistance stops fighting and fails or it keeps fighting and never wins because winning presupposes a loss that must be repaired with another victory of failure. So, to sum it all up. Nothing matters and everything and everyone is trapped in a temporal causality loop, where an infinite amount of Terminators is sent back in time to kill an infinite amount of Sarah Connors, that are being protected by an infinite amount of Carl Reese's puffs, which cause an infinite amount of John Connors to be born, which causes Phil Connors from Groundhog Day to wake up and start the entire process all over again. Flat! The direction is boring. The dialogue is boring, the story is boring, the staging is boring, the acting is boring, everything is boring. Even the action is boring. Like, remember that scene from The Dark Knight? That was so cool, let's do it again. In terms of action, this movie's the weakest, by far. I can't even remember any action scenes, beside that helicopter one, which was so ridiculous. Like, where'd John Connor get that helicopter? I've already mentioned the flat, boring, wooden acting, especially from Shovel Face here. Which way to Cyberdyne? But I think the director can take some of that blame. He's directed tons of television, and I've seen some episodes he's directed. He directs stuff for HBO, and he's good. And those shows are good. So I don't know what happened here. But perhaps that's why this movie looks so flat, because he directs television. It's a very boring movie to look at. Say whatever you want about James Cameron. You can tell when you're watching a James Cameron film. Just from the color palette alone. There is only one scene in this whole movie with interesting composition, and that's this scene with Kyle and Sarah in the locker room. Kyle and Sarah are on opposite sides of the room, and there's that big wall of lockers between them. In the first Terminator, they were supposed to meet and fall in love. But the blocking of this scene clearly shows that there's a distance between them now. Sarah Connor's not the same Sarah Connor. And then we see T-100 appear on Sarah's side. This shows that the T-100 has filled the gap Kyle was supposed to fill. This is an interesting and clever way of showing that. It's kind of like what a real director does. If the scene were shot like any other scene in the movie, it'd just be two people in a room talking. Amelia and Arnold clicked and had a wonderful rapport. I think you feel it, sort of. Uh... Erase everything we cared about. Once again, I would have preferred a reboot, because this movie's like a giant middle finger to anyone who's ever liked these movies. It basically says, hey, everything that happened in those other movies doesn't matter at all, because everything was reset. Those great scenes between the T-100 and John Connor, those are gone now. The beautiful budding romance between Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor is gone now. Everything you loved is gone now. Instead, it's replaced with this. His body was replaced on a cellular level. Cellular level. Now, I know technically you could say it's a different universe, going back to that whole different timeline shit, but who gives a flying fuck? There's probably millions of different universes. There's probably a universe where I'm not a fat, ugly homo. Doesn't mean I get to enjoy that universe. Where am I going with this? God. Cellular level. The marketplace. This is pretty much how I ended my Transformers 4 review. Hollywood no longer makes movies for America anymore. They make movies for everyone. The whole world. They've got the whole world in their hands. Movies like this, especially big, dumb, stupid movies, do very well in foreign countries like China. 
And I've actually gotten quite a lot of feedback from that Transformers 4 review. Apparently most people in China hate these stupid movies. That doesn't matter, they keep releasing them there, and they keep doing well in foreign countries. Now I like this guy, Li Byung Hun? Li Byung Hun? I like this guy, he's a good actor, and he's great in bed. But why did they cast him as the T-1000? You ever think about that? Now you could say they got him because they thought he would be the best person to play the T-1000 again. But I think it's just because he's South Korean. No one else said it, so I guess I have to. They keep making movies bigger, dumber, and stupider so that they can appeal to foreign countries. They gotta get all the demographics in there too. They can't make it too violent. The Terminator movies have always been violent, brutal, bloody, disturbing, full of murder. But no one gets stabbed in the eye in this movie. And now for some reason Terminator is PG-13 and is safe for kids. Since when was Terminator safe for kids? They throw in terrible child actors so that kids can find someone to relate to. Little kids should not be watching fucking Terminator. Why not just end the movie with a musical number? Like the Despicable Me movies. End it with the T-100, Sarah Connor, and John Connor, all performing I Wanna Be Sedated. I wanna be fucking sedated, so I'm not gonna repeat myself, I've already said all this in my Transformers 4 review, which you can click right here and watch it. So yeah, they stopped making movies that are smart, creative, innovative, and interesting, and now they're just making the same shit over and over and over and over and over and over and over, hoping to get China's money. It's a fact, and it's sad. Well, that's it. It's done. So how do we end this review? Well, there's only one way to end this review. Forever, forever, hours ago, I wanna be sedated. Nothing to go and learn where to go home. What a bunch of homos. Give me the thing Hurry, 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 before I go insane. Think it's on my fingers, I take it to my friend. No, 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 no. Whatever, whatever, how's it go? I wanna be sedated. Nothing to do, no way to go home. I wanna be sedated. Just give me a little bit. Get me on a plane, hurry, 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 before I go and say, can't control my fingers, I can't control my brain, no, 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 no. I wanna be sedated Nothing to do, no way to go home I wanna be sedated Give me an elevator, I can't control my day Hurry, 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 where do I ever go? I can't control my fingers, I can't control my toe No, 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 no To do no way to go home. I wanna be sedated. I wanna be sedated.